Ranking only just above Red Dwarf's laboratory mice, this slobby, dirty, lazy, tone-deaf, lovable space bum may not be the human race's first choice for a hero, but all the same, he's our last Megan hope for survival. Well, greetings, fellow dwarfers. Welcome to Red Dwarf Nerd. Today, we're taking a brief look at the life and traits of everyone's favourite lout, the unforgettable David Lister, RD52169. Born 3 million years in the future, an extraordinarily complex causality loop means that Dave is actually his own father, while an alternative reality, Christine Kachansky, is his mother. And his love interest? David grew up 30,000 centuries before his birth, in 22nd century Liverpool. This rough rascal had an early life filled with petty crime, loutish behaviour, zero-G football, curries, girlfriends and even a short spell as a wannabe rock god. After dropping out of art college just minutes into his first day, David spent a decade as a shopping trolley attendant before joining the Jupiter Mining Corps, donning a third technician uniform and hopping aboard the small rouge one. On board, Lister was subordinate to, and bunked with, the chronically underachieving, yet hopelessly ambitious second tech, Arnold Rimmer, BSC, SSC. This definitive cosmic odd couple were given the rather less than vital responsibility of maintaining onboard vending machines, a task taken more than seriously by the inept Rimmer, while the quite bright Lister's enthusiasm for this task was all but non-existent. It was during these early few months aboard that Dave fell in love with Officer Christine Kachansky and decided she needed to be part of his plans to one day farm horses on Fiji. Accounts differ somewhat here, with early seasons limiting their relationship to merely flirting, while later seasons describe them dating for several weeks. Just eight months into his time on board, Dave made a decision which would shape every part of the rest of his life would save the human race from extinction, evolve an entirely new sentient species, and give us 30 plus years of comedy gold. That decision? He bought a cat. And here we get more differing accounts of events. In the early seasons, it merely seems Dave just foolishly bought a pregnant cat for a bit of fun, named her Frankenstein, included her in his Fiji plan, snuck her aboard, and was stupid enough to let incriminating photos make their way to the captain. Season 7's retelling of events presents the cat as an impulse buy to help Dave get over his breakup with Kachansky. While the novel, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers, puts a whole different spin on events. Here, Dave wants to get himself caught, with his plan to purposely get punished with time in stasis, in order to save him having to spend the rest of the trip potentially bumping into Kachansky following their breakup. Whichever version of events you prefer, the ultimate outcome is the same. Dave chooses not to hand over the cat for dissection and gets 18 months without pay in stasis where he's essentially frozen in time without even noticing that a moment is passing by. However, as we all know, those 18 months got somewhat extended when, following a deadly radiation leak which wiped out the remainder of the crew, Holly, the ship's AI, had to keep Dave in stasis until the radiation dissipated. Free million years later. Dave emerges to find the once packed ship, now populated by just the now senile Holly, a holographic version of the long dead Rimmer, a humanoid cat evolved from Frankenstein's kittens, and Dave himself, now the only living survivor of the crew, and presumably the last living human in the universe. From here the capers begin in earnest, with the boys finding themselves travelling through time, jumping dimensions, battling monsters, battling each other, and getting up to years of adventures for our amusement. Dave even gets a spell as a deity. After his selflessness in saving Frankenstein at the expense of himself, he became revered as the cat's god and saviour, with the events of the first episode essentially becoming the basis for the cat's entire religion. Some men are born great, some achieve greatness, and some smeggers get called god just for smuggling a pregnant moggy onto a spaceship. From season 3, the mechanoid Crichton joins the crew full-time, having been rebuilt by Dave. But despite Lister helping Crichton to break his programming and be more independent, the hapless mech spends his life playing nursemaid and mum to the universe's one remaining slob. Standout moments for Lister include him becoming pregnant with twins, travelling in time to meet his younger self, meeting his older and rather less healthy looking self, playing pool with planets, getting erased from existence, rocking out with Hitler, and even getting married to a Gelf bride. 
In fact, as far as we know, they've never actually been divorced. Of course, there are far too many great moments of Lister's space mishaps, blunders, cunning solutions and brave acts to list them all here. A running gag with Lister is his complete and utter lack of musical talent, yet his blind conviction that he's a guitar-slinging rock monster. There are also loads of comical moments involving his low hygiene, laziness and complete curry obsession. So Lister is the last surviving human, lazily bumming around space three million years into the future, surviving on curries and lager, yet when trouble shows up, he can be smart, resourceful and willing to put himself in harm's way for his friends. So Dave Lister, he's pretty cool, he doesn't take any smeg and even though he's disgusting, sometimes he can be quite brave. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you like this new style, doing a quick analysis of one of our favourite characters. And there's plenty more coming because we've got plenty more characters left. So if you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you know when the next episode is out. And if you want to know exactly when that episode comes, then hit the bell icon as well. Give us a like if you've enjoyed this one. Leave a comment of anything you want to say or anything you want to ask. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you next time, Smegheads.